Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 7, Patterns in Scatter Plots. Okay, so classwork example one, in the previous lesson, you learned that scatter plots show trends in bivariate data. When you look at a scatter plot, you should ask yourself the following questions. Self, does it look like there is a relationship between the two variables used to make the scatter plot? Self, is there a relationship? Does it appear to be linear? Self, if the relationship appears to be linear, is the relationship a positive linear relationship or a negative linear relationship? Okay, to answer the first question, is there a relation between the two variables? Look for patterns in the scatter plot. Does there appear to be a general pattern to the points in the scatter plot? Or do the points look as if they are scattered at random? If you see a pattern, you can answer the second question by thinking about whether the pattern would be well described by a line. The ans answering the third question requires you to distinguish between positive linear relationships and a negative linear relationship. A positive linear relationship is one that is described by a line with a positive slope. And a negative linear relationship is one that is described by a line with a negative slope. So here's exercise one. Take a look at the following five scatter plots. Answer the three questions in example one for each scatter plot. And so here we go, scatter plot one. Is there a relationship? Well, if I drew a line through here, it kind of looks like there's something going on like in this direction here. They're very close to a line that would be like this. And I would say, yes, there is a relationship, okay? It is, they are kind of clustered in a linear pattern. Is there a relationship? If there is a relationship, does it appear to be linear? And I would again say, yes, it looks like it's close to a line. If the relationship appears to be linear, is it a positive or negative linear relationship? This one is negative because as X increases, Y is decreasing. Okay. Scatter plot number two. Is there a relationship? Well, I would say yes because it looks like they're very close to this line right here. So I'd say yes. If there is a relationship, does it appear to be linear? And I'd say yes again. And if the relationship appears to be linear, is it positive or negative? Well, it's a positive linear relationship because as X increases, Y is increasing. Number three, is there a relationship here? Mm, this kind of just looks kind of willy-nilly, okay? So this is kind of going around like that. That's not really a straight line. I can't really find a straight line that would represent all of those points. So is there a relationship? I would say no. And since I'd say no, then I don't need to answer the next two questions. Okay, so the other two answers or questions do not apply, so we'll skip those. So number four, scatter plot. Is there a relationship? Well, it does kind of appear to be along some sort of function going like this. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, but I would say yes, that is a relationship. Obviously, it's not linear. That's not a straight line, so I'd say no. That no was meant for here. If the relationship appears to be linear, that does not apply because we said no here, so let's move on to number five. All right, number five. This is just a mess. All right, so there is, is there a relationship? Does it appear to be linear? Um, I would struggle to say yes here. So I'm, I'm the, if I look at the key, the key is saying yes, but I disagree. I don't think there's a relationship here. There's not really a line going on here. That is just a mess. So I'm going to say no, not applicable in the other two. Okay. Number six, below is a scatter plot of data on weight in pounds X. So there's my X. And fuel efficiency in miles per gallon Y for 13 cars. Using the equations at the beginning of this lesson as a guide, write a few sentences describing any possible relationship between X and Y. I would say there is a relationship, yes. It appears to be linear. appears hang on try that again appears linear 
And let's go back and just take a look at that question one more time. Does it look like the relationship, there is a relationship, if there is, is it linear? And if the relationship is linear, is it positive or negative? Okay, so those, that's what we've just been doing on the last few examples. So now that we're here, where was I? Right here. It appears linear. And if I drew a line through these points, it'd kind of be like that. So I would say a negative relationship or slope. What were we saying here? Negative linear relationship. It is a negative linear relationship. Okay, number seven. Below is a scatter plot of data on prices in dollars X and quality rating Y for bike counts. Using the questions at the beginning of this lesson as a guide, write a few sentences describing the, any possible relationship between X and Y. I really don't see, it's pretty weak, so I would say no linear relationship. No linear relationship or no relationship at all I don't think okay it's just up and down all over the place okay below is a scatter plot on shell length in millimeters X and age in years Y for 27 lobsters of known age using the questions at the beginning of this lesson and as a guide write a few sentences okay so it is increasing, but it's not really a straight line. So I would say, and they're all pretty close to this function here. I would say, yes, there is a relationship. And I'd say positive. So as the shell length increases, the age increases. So yes, there is a positive relationship. But it is not linear. Okay, number nine. Okay, this one appears to be linear. It also appears to have a positive relationship. So this is a scatter plot from crocodiles on body mass in pounds and bite force in pounds. So what they're basically saying is the larger the body mass, the stronger or harder it can bite. Using the questions at the beginning of this lesson as a guide, write a few sentences. Okay. So, I would say yes, there is a positive linear relationship. Because as weight increased, the bite force increased. Okay, here's example two, clusters and outliers. In addition to looking for general pattern in a scatter plot, you should also look for other interesting features that might help you understand the relationship between two variables. Two things to watch for as follows. Here are some vocabulary. Clusters. They're usually the points in a scatter plot form a single cloud of points. But sometimes the points may form two or more distinct clouds of points. These clouds are called clusters. Investigating these clusters may tell you something useful about the data. And then we have outliers. An outlier is an unusual point in a scatter plot that does not seem to, general, to fit the general pattern or that is far away from other points in the scatter plot. The scatter plot below is constructed using data from a study of Rocky Mountain elk, estimating elk weight from chest girth. So the larger the chest girth, it appears that this elk, the elk weigh more. Okay. So an elk is like a deer. It's just a... Okay, so number 10. Do you notice any point in the scatter plot of elk weight versus chest girth that might be described as an outlier? And if so, which one? And I would say maybe this one here. Okay, these are all kind of grouped together. There's a group there, there's a group there, but then this guy's all by himself. Okay, so this is a little dude. So I would say that would be a possible outlier. There's no points near this one. Okay, I'm not going to write anything there. I'm just going to describe it. 
Number 11, if you identified an outlier in exercise 10, which we did, write a sentence describing how this data observation differs from the others, okay? The elk is much smaller and therefore weighs less than the others. Okay, so make that legible now. The elk is, elk is much smaller and therefore weighs less than the others. Number 11. Number 12. Do you notice any clusters in the scatter plot? If so, how would you dis distinguish between the clusters in terms of chest girth? Can you think of a reason these clusters might have occurred? So we're going to take another look and look for cluster. Okay, so in looking at this data, I would say that is a cluster here. There's a bit of a cluster here, and then there's yet a third cluster here, along with this outlier all by itself down here. So we kind of have an average size and weight. Then we have some mammoths, some really big guys. So those might be the older group in the or older guys in the group. And males tend to be larger than females in the elk population. So maybe these are males, and these are females here. And then these in the middle here is, I'm not sure. Could be a number of reasons for that. But those are the three possible clusters that we see. Okay, that is the end of lesson seven. Review the lesson summary on the scatter plots and go to your problem set.